Hi everyone, this is a, another installment of The Garage. This is just where I talk about a bunch of little stuff that really doesn't quite warrant its own video, but I did have a few things I wanted to talk about. So, uh, first update is uh, on the Cineking 4K. You might have seen my previous video where I was uh, concerned about this uh, prop ring getting into the connector because it happened to me and uh, this ring hit the connector and popped it off. And I was searching around for a solution and uh, someone had a nice comment in the last video. You know, this guy called uh, Bob Dobolina. Uh, suggested maybe using some of this, uh, you know, this yellow glue that you find on FR Sky receiver antennas, uh, using some of that stuff to help uh, keep this connector attached, and I think that's actually not a bad idea. That stuff does hold pretty well. Uh, however, I don't have any, and the only place I could find it was at Banggood, so it's going to take two or three weeks to get that. Uh, so in the meantime, I was still thinking about a way to fix this and, uh, or at least mitigate the problem somewhat, and I think I hit on something that might work, at least as a uh, makeshift solution. I took some of those foam strips that came in the kit, and I just took a small piece of that and put it on the back ring. See, on the back ring here. One of the reasons why this was such a dangerous setup was that if this lip of the front ring managed to bury itself under the back ring, then that would send the ring right into the connector, just directly. But if you put a little piece of that foam strip just right there on the back ring, it will, hopefully, it will more or less stop, except maybe in the hardest crash, it does stop the front ring from burying itself under that lip, and that does actually a pretty good job of keeping the ring clear of the connector. Probably not perfect, but I think much better than it was, and I feel pretty confident flying with it like this. So I think I'll leave it like this for now. And uh, with that done, I certainly like this model quite a bit more now, and uh, if you have this, you can definitely try that, and I think it'll help mitigate that particular issue with this uh, with this model. And also, today I was giving it, I uh, wanted to try a little bit more uh, performance testing with it, see how the uh, punch-out was, and try a little bit of light acro, and I was pretty impressed with it when I did a uh, full power punch-out. Uh, I think it was pulling about 20 amps on the uh, current meter, so that's about, um, that's about 5 amps per ESC, so that's well within the range. That's totally safe. And I was able to do uh, light acro. I had plenty of power for that. It was just, the biggest issue is that if you're used to flying something like this, something like this cruises around like at, you know, even like 20% or less throttle. But for this to cruise around, it needs to be more like at 40% throttle. So you're using like a different part of the throttle range. So, you know, the acro I was doing was looking pretty bad, but I think you just need to get used to using the uh, higher part of the throttle range. But, you know, it's not really meant to be fun flying acro with this, although you can do it throw some acrobatics into your cinematic moves, but uh, for cinematic stuff, I think it's it's quite good that Runcam, the hybrid, I'm still impressed with that. Great looking image from that. Not quite a GoPro, but still a lot of detail, and it looks, the colors are good. So, moving on to the next thing. I noticed recently that the gnarly FPV Primo 3, they have updated the canopy a little bit. So, you, I think the most obvious change you can see is that they moved the antenna tubes from the back on the bottom. They used to come out of the uh, bottom part of the uh, jelly mount there, but now they come out of the top, and that's actually quite a bit easier to route receiver antennas up through there as opposed to around the flight controller or under the flight controller, the way it used to be. So that's a nice update there, and it looks pretty cool that way too. And the other thing they changed was they made this bottom uh, mount a little bit taller, so now you have more room in the middle here for components, so that maybe will help you add, maybe if you wanted to put in an HD uh, whoop board, like a split three with a whoop or the baby turtle with the whoop board, it might be able to fit in here a little bit easier. I think there's about uh, 15 millimeters of clearance in here now, whereas before there was about 13. So 15 millimeters clearance, should be enough for for two boards and maybe a Nano VTX somewhere, and then also your receiver. So I think they did a, a good job with this update canopy. It looks good, and so far this is still the uh, best thing I've flown this year. But it's not only it's, is it the frame, but it's also the uh, Beta FPV. This toothpick board with the flat layout is really excellent. But I think the biggest thing is are these uh, 1303 motors. I mean these things are just uh, they're so powerful, so efficient, and uh, really a terrific flying experience. And today. Like I was flying it on a little, just a 300, I was flying for about four minutes with plenty of uh, power. And then, you know, like on, you, you might have seen the last video I did on this, if you fly it with something like a 520, you can fly for probably even up to seven minutes. And the motors come down cool, and so it's obviously a very efficient yet powerful uh, setup. So my favorite so far, and really great on any battery between these, these ranges. So these motors and this frame are a great combination, but these motors would also be good on the next thing I'm going to talk about, and that's this. This is the... Uh, Airblade uh, Intrepid Mini. I got this in just because I thought it was uh, cute. It's like a shrunken version of the bigger Intrepid, which usually has uh, is, is long this way, and you can run two stacks back to back, you know, for HD or something. But this is just shortened, and you can run a 16 by 16, or also you can run a, a whoop size board. So I think this would be ideal for like maybe a, a whoop size uh, flight controller, then a uh, like a split three nano whoop, and then the baby turtle, or the baby turtle V2 whoop, two stacks like that, and then a VTX, and you have this great. Uh, rigid camera mount, which I think would be ideal for HD. You should get really good jello-free uh, footage with this. That's about, um, the dry weight of the uh, frame itself is just about 21 grams, so it's a little bit heavier. 
and the whole quad itself weighs about 75 grams once everything's in. So that's about um, eight or nine grams heavier than this, but there's, I think, quite a bit more room in here for fitting electronics, so I think that's the trade-off there. But yeah, pretty nice design. I'm just running a 16 by 16 and a regular non-HD camera, but, oh, and the 1105 Zing. The Zing motor, 6,000 kV on 3S. I just want to put a little, put a little 3S battery on top because it's a, you can see what a nice fit. Oh, and also the only, this kit comes with everything you need, but it doesn't come with a battery pad or a Velcro strap. So unfortunately you do need to add those yourself for the time being. Maybe they'll add those in the kit later, but for now they don't have it. So you can see this uh, little 3S300, a great fit on top of the frame. And yours is going to be different, but uh, very easy to plug the battery in and all that sort of thing. And nice flight, nice balance with the battery on top. So that is the little uh, Airblade Mini Intrepid, just a cute another th choice for this small 3-inch class. Uh, that's it. Anyway, thanks for watching this, and I hope to see you in the next one.